The One Piece manga just set up the biggest challenge for Luffy and co in the story so far. As the crew is getting ready to leave the laboratory on Egghead Island together with their newest crew member Dr. Vegapunk, Admiral Kizaru is about to arrive at the island with a massive fleet of marine warships. And the narrator says at the end of the chapter, Semaru Kaigun Honbu Saiko Senryoku which literally means the marine headquarters ultimate military power is approaching. And so this could mean that we finally get to see an admiral go all out for the very first time in the story. That would mean that we finally also see how strong the admirals truly are and if the Straw Hats are actually powerful enough to take on the strongest people in the Marines. But wait a second, you might be wondering, how did Kizaru get here so fast? Well, as soon as Kizaru heard about the Straw Hats being on the island, he immediately put one and one together and figured out that the Straw Hats would try and rescue Vegapunk from the special agent sent by the government to assassinate him. And you know, I think it's very easy to underestimate Kizaru. I mean, he always looks like he's the least motivated out of all the admirals who doesn't take anything seriously. However, as we know, this couldn't be further from the truth. We've seen it many, many times now that Kizaru is actually the most active out of all the marine admirals that we've seen so far. I mean, let's look at it. Green Bull seems to enjoy lying around and immediately retreated from Wano once he couldn't easily dominate his opponents anymore. Both Aokiji and Fujitora are always extremely careful in their actions, taking circumstances and the people around them into consideration. And and even Akainu is surprisingly passive in his leadership. For instance, he refuses to attack Wano, carefully considering the Marine's power and what a battle would mean for his forces. So Kizaru is really the only admiral who is always eager to jump right into action. And so we've seen Akainu trying to hold him back a number of times now. Remember, Kizaru was willing to go to Wano on his own and face three Yonko at once. That takes some serious balls. And I do actually want to explain all the marine admirals in detail, so I will make a dedicated video about that if at least 1000 people subscribe until tomorrow. But going back to Kizaru, did you also notice that he is clearly not really eager to take orders from Akainu? Because while Akainu is getting briefed on the situation with Luffy and Luchi, he only then realizes that Vegapunk probably knew about the world government's plan to kill him all along. In the meantime, Kizaru had not only gotten that information before the fleet admiral, but also had already left with an entire army without waiting for Akainu's permission. And as I said, the manga literally says in Japanese, the marine headquarters ultimate military power is approaching. Does that mean an admiral? Or does the narrator mean Kizaru specifically? Because it would be truly a bombshell if the strongest marine fighter would turn out to be neither Akainu nor Aokiji, who both fought for the position of fleet admiral, but actually Kizaru all along. And I mean, Kizaru himself at least seems to be quite confident that he can stop the Straw Hats by himself, either with sheer strength or he has something up his sleeve that he's bringing along with him. So will Luffy actually fight against Kizaru? Will we finally find out how strong an admiral is at full strength? I mean, it's possible. And I think there are three ways that this could actually go. Option one, Kizaru is about to attack the Straw Hats and Vegapunk, but someone comes in and rescues the Straw Hat and allows them to get get away. And I do think this scenario is actually pretty likely. I mean, we've seen it happen before. For one, we do know that we have Vegapunk with the crew now, and it would be really surprising if he didn't have a bunch of tricks up his sleeve in his own laboratory that would then allow the crew to escape the incoming fleet of warships. On top of that, you might also remember that Kuma has started running away from the revolutionaries and has most likely teleported himself towards where Luffy and his daughter Bonnie are. Because that happened exactly the moment when Vegapunk realized that the agents of CP0 had infiltrated the islands. So Kuma could be the one to save the crew once again from Kizaru, just like he did on Saba Odi Archipelago. And speaking of that, by the way, there are a lot of parallels with Saba Odi and Ennis Lobby during this arc, like, phew. Cyborg Frankie versus Cyborg Vegapunk, the Ohara flashback during Ennis Lobby, and the Ohara flashback here, Luchi versus Luffy, version 2, Sentomaru, Kizaru, and Kuma versus the Straw Hats, and this time it's Sentomaru, Kuma, and the Straw Hats against Kizaru. And also, there is a real chance that the Revolutionary Army might show up here as well again. After all, Dragon was chasing after Kuma and trying to stop him from leaving again. And so, in the end, the Straw Hats might just be able to escape another time and we'll have to wait for 
for their battle against the admirals for just a little bit longer. Unless we have option two here, that is a little bit less likely, but my personal favorites. Since the crew is about to set sail and Kizaru is coming with a fleet of ships, there is a chance that we might get to see the first sea battle in the history of One Piece. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but even though One Piece is a story about pirates and marines sailing the giant oceans of the world, we haven't had a single real sea battle in the entire story. The closest we've gotten so far was the crew being chased around, like on Hulk Kick Island, for instance. So it would be truly refreshing to see some actual ship versus ship battle for a change, which would also give Frankie a real chance to show off his technology to Vegapunk. And this would of course also be a great opportunity for the Straw Hat Grand Fleet to arrive. I mean, imagine the Thousand Sunny all alone facing a whole armada of warships and then suddenly ships appearing behind them at the horizon. Not only would that make for a super epic scene, but it would also be a great chance to bring Hyrogen and his giant crew into the story again to then guide the Straw Hats to Elbaf, which, let's be honest, is most likely the next destination after this. Now, I do not know how the Grand Fleet would possibly know about the Straw Hats being in danger, but it would be truly awesome to see nonetheless. But option number three would be even better, maybe, and that's that the Straw Hats actually have an all-out battle with Kizaru and the other Marines. Now, it's really hard to say how powerful Kizaru really is and if Luffy would be able to defeat him. Is Kizaru stronger than Kaido? I mean, it seems unlikely, but then again, he was more than eager to go to Wano and fight Kaido, Luffy, and Big Mom together, so who knows? But even if we say that he is a bit weaker than Kaido, Luffy has just used his Gear 5 form in his fight with Luchi. And yes, he has successfully beaten Luchi a second time, and even though Luchi clearly has become very powerful himself, he couldn't even touch Luffy. But interestingly enough, we also see that Luffy has once again turned into that old man form after using his awakening. So clearly, Gear 5 is draining Luffy of his energy, and I'm not sure that he would be able to simply reactivate it again if Kizaru just popped up now. On the other hand, all the other Straw Hats are kind of well rested. Zoro and Sanji definitely could at least put up a decent fight this time. And on top of that, we also have seen a pair of gloves in Vegapunk's lab that make it possible to touch light, plus an actual lightsaber that Bonnie picked up as well. So in a way, it does seem like Oda has at least set up a fight with Admiral Kizaru for somebody. But on top of all this epic setup for Kizaru and his Grand Armada, we have also had some other major stuff happening in this chapter too. Luffy's battle with Luchi was absolutely epic and really fun to read really. We got a bunch of new Gear 5 attacks and a ton of references to their original fight during Anna's lobby. I mean, some of the panels were designed in the exact same way, like this one from last chapter, and this time Luchi also thinks to himself that his consciousness is fading, which is the exact same line that he had on Anna's lobby. I really think the fight was more something to just enjoy, not really to discuss or theorize about in depth here. I really liked that Luchi was super strong and didn't go down easily right away, but still couldn't lay a finger on Luffy, who now finally gets the respect that a Yonko really deserves. The biggest takeaway of the entire fight is to me that the three Seraphim who were in the lab have now all gone over to the government side. Though it was really nice seeing them fight as an ally here for a second. And I also really like that the Seraphim can actually talk and seem to have real personality as well. Because this not only makes them terrifying weapons, but actual characters that can be talked to and interacted with. So it might well be that Luffy will free them from the government control too at some point, or maybe Maybe Vegapunk has secretly inserted Dragon as their supreme commander on top of the Gorosei. And then we also had even more lore drop on Vegapunk's artificial devil fruit. Because he confirms to us that different categories of devil fruits are differently easy or hard to copy. Zone fruits, as we already guessed, are the easiest because they are literally based on animals. Paramecia fruits, on the other hand, require DNA from the user, which is known as the lineage factor in One Piece. And Logia fruit users are based basically impossible to copy. They just really like being the most unique category of fruits, huh? Well, this of course also explains why the Jinbei Seraphim has the Swim Swim fruit after Doflamingo and his crew were captured by the Marines. And I would say it is very likely that there is a Dofi Seraphim as well with his string fruit powers too. Also, this might explain why Shanks insisted on taking Aces and Whitebeard's body away from a fort to keep the government from stealing his earthquake powers as well. Because let's be real, if any 
anyone knows about this going on, then it's Shanks after all. And speaking of the lineage factor and devil fruit experiments, we also have to talk about the cover of this chapter as well, where we see younger versions of Dr. Vegapunk, a slim queen, an emo Caesar, and a really quirky looking Judge Vinsmoke. I mean, look at these designs. But it stood out to me that the judge doesn't actually have Sanji's spiral eyebrows, nor does his mother. So I think the idea that Sanji has received some sort of Devil Fruit ability from the Lineage Factor experiments on him seems to have gotten a lot more proof here. And in case you're wondering, that's because his eyebrows have the same spiral shape that can also be found on Devil Fruits. And really, we've gotten so much knowledge on Devil Fruits and their awakening these last few chapters that, as promised, I have condensed everything that we know so far into this video if you'd like to get a bit of an overview. Thanks so much for watching.